in the front here. It's all you can do. Do face service. Are you ready to praise God? Are you ready to praise God? Okay. So that means we're on the same page, right? Come on, give him the praise. Give him the praise. All right now. My God is so good. I love you guys on this side. Come on. Are you ready? Let's go. One time. Okay, okay, jump to your left. Jump to the left. 
my God. Carry me the Oh my God. Carry me the Anywhere, anywhere better day. Carry me Michael, oh, God bless. 
Yes, Michael. What about you? Oh, Sammy Lore. Oh, what a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. We are going to show. We are going to show. Let's have a pep talk. We are going to show mommy and daddy and aunties how to dance today, right? You are right, right? All of us, all of us. Are you with me? Yeah? Pep talk is going to be done. Okay. Let's treat them like this. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner. Okay, mommy, daddy, grandpa, grandma, everybody in the house, all my big pastors, God bless you, sir. All my pastor misses, God bless you. But God wants to see winners in the house because the winning side is the hey. okay. Are you ready? Huh? Why you see me dance? I dance like a winner. made we will rejoice we will be glad in it oh amazing amazing you're welcome father in the name of jesus we thank you for young leaders continental conference of 2022 our first and father we declare this conference is open in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit it will be a wonderful conference everyone will be blessed lord every minister speak through them and let no Nobody leave the way they came uh, to your own glory. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 
Wow, what a time to be alive. I'm so excited you are here, and I'm so excited I am here. Take a seat. Uh, uh, just maintain a posture that will make you comfortable, because tonight uh, we are in for a ride. And do you know what the destination is? Glory, brothers. <laughs> we are going to experience liquid glory from the Almighty God himself. Uh, he has a glorious future for us, uh, and there is something about a glorious future. Uh, that glorious future, there is nothing the devil can can do about it. <laughs> it is already settled. And so you only now need to align yourself to that glorious future. And you see, what this conference will literally do for you is to align you to that glorious future. So here's what you do. Be expectant. Do not be distracted. I mean, just block out this few minutes, few hours, because what you are about to experience, you will not recover from it. You're going to thank me later because this is going to be awesome. Now, tell somebody to tell somebody that we are live. Uh, let them register right now. It's not too late. They can join us now. We want to double the number of people watching right now. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's make history together. Go, 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 go. And we will see you on the other side where, you know, where people are going to gather together. But you are going to have an amazing ride tonight. It's going to be beautiful. Jesus will be glorified and you will be edified. And I can tell you of a certainty, you have a glorious future and you will fulfill that glorious future. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome. RCCG Yaya the Americas presents the Young Leaders Continental Conference themed The Glorious Future from April 8th to 9th. Featuring seasoned speakers, Pastor James Fidel, Pastor Femi Olawale, Apostle Joshua Selman, Pastor Kunle Omotosho, Pastor P.K. Olawale, Pastor Dili Oshumakinde, Pastor Fola Alade, and Counselor Shade Bright. Register now for the virtual conference at yaya.rccgamericas.org slash YLC. Wow. Was that the turning point for you or did you have a turning point moment, a Jacob versus the angel moment where you're just like, I won't let you go until you bless me. That, that, that was a turning point for me. Wow. The turning point in the sense that I knew without any doubt, if I continue to go the other way, I'll be going against what God wants for me. Uh, what I wanted for myself was to be an engineer. I like construction. I like engineering. I like buildings. Uh, it's something that I'm passionate about even till now. Uh, but God wanted me in to do something different. Some, there was something much more in my DNA that God had put there that I didn't realize. That time, God was waking me up to that other thing. Mm. And I was already doing it. I was enjoying it, going to church, teaching people, touching lives, improving people's lives, dealing with young people. And there were a lot of people that were depending on my coming to teach them. So I was always between two. What made this man to slap me was that I, I, I left his work to go to church. Mm -hmm. I left his work mm -hmm. to go and minister to people. And he felt, no, I, 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 the, the work will be put in jeopardy. Uh, so the moment I came to the conclusion I need to yield to God totally, I now went to God and I threw myself at him. My fear is how will I sustain my family? How will I take care of myself? The ministry work will be able to take care yeah. of us. I, I, I want to be your treasurer. Mm -hmm. And I heard God say to me, yes, you'll be my treasurer, mm -hmm. but I'll make other people bring the money mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to dispense it to get the work done. Mm -hmm. But I want you to do the work. To do the work. Wow, wow. What are three lessons that you would tell young people in leadership today? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'll tell young people in leadership about values and about choices. Uh, what we have today is the 
decisions we took yesterday, yeah, the choices we make, and the issue is what are the things that define our choices, they are basically our value system, and some people's values are based on what their parents told them, uh, some people's value system are based on their culture, where they come from, uh, but I tell people, let your value system be based on where you are going, your future, now if you don't have a definition of where God as ordained for you and your value is based on the particular future that you'll find out that it's, it's pseudo it's fake, it's not real because the real future is the one God has ordained for you, it's the one who knows the end from the beginning so until you know what God has ordained for you you can't have the right value system so if, and I tell people the ultimate is heaven the ultimate is heaven. So let your value system be based on heaven. So when you see our Father and the Lord, Pastor Adebuyo's value system is just holiness. Right. Holiness has a virtue to be able to make it to heaven. Then you know you can't get it wrong. Yes. Okay. So have a value system for the future. That will define your choices in life. To help you to know what to say no to and what to say yes to. And the moment you begin to say yes to the right things, like the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, that be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Say, so don't be conformed even to this world, but ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to know what is that perfect and acceptable will yes. of God for your life. Mm. The moment you settle this value system and you are in the right track with God, then God will let you know what His will is for your life. Mm. Awesome. <laughs>
lift our voice to you.
thank the most high God that has made this to happen. We welcome you to the 2022 uh, Young Leaders Continental Conference. This is a production of the uh, Yaya the Americas, Young Adults and Youth Ministry of America. We just want to thank God for our programs unit that has put this together. It's our annual conference. If you like, you can call it our annual convention as young people, and we call it the Young Leaders Conference. This year, we are mightily blessed by the ministry of Joshua Selman all the way from uh, Nigeria. And we want to thank the Lord for our fathers of faith in this continent, the Continental Overseer, Pastor James Fadell, the Deputy Continental Overseer, uh, Pastor uh, Femi Olawale, who are both going to be bringing us the word at one time or the other during this two-day conference. You are in for a great time. I want to just encourage you. You can't afford to miss any moment of this two-day event. Today, in the next three hours, we will be together uh, fellowshipping. And tomorrow, by the grace of God, uh, starting from 10 a.m. Uh, uh, Central Time, is also going to be a great time. There's also a breakout session where you'll be mightily, mightily blessed uh, under the administration of several men of God, friends of mine, people that I know without any doubt, their ministries will bless your life. Our theme this year is a glorious future. I have no doubt that as young people that our future is great, our future is mighty, our future is glorious. The issue is what are we doing to key into that glorious tomorrow, that glorious future that God has for us. I'm bringing you the welcome charge in the next few minutes and I just trust the Lord that this will set the pace for this meeting, this conference for this year. Let us pray. Father eternal, we thank you. King of glory, we appreciate you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. As we continue in this evening's gathering, we ask, O oh God, that you will speak to our hearts. You speak to our life. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Glorious God. Beautiful King, excellent one, we bow before your throne. 
glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne. Bow before your throne, worship at your feet, bow before your throne, you are the glorious God, bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You are the glorious God, your name is Alpha, 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 Omega, Omega, Daddy, you are changeless, Daddy, you are changeless, Almighty, Almighty, Jehovah, Jehovah. Glorious God, we bow before your throne. Everlasting Father, eternal rock of ages, we depend on you. We ask that from this moment, let your word be backed up by your spirit. You said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Let every word that we come, even from this platform to the entire world, let it touch lives. Let it prepare young men for leadership. Let it prepare young women for leadership. Let everyone be ready to take the mantle of assignment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Holy Spirit, please breathe upon us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The theme, like we already know, is a glorious future. And we will take text for this evening from the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, when you read in verse 14. In the New Living Translation, the Bible says, In the same way, wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will have a bright future, and your hopes will not be cut short. Wisdom is sweet. If you find wisdom, the Bible says it will be sweet to your soul. <laughs> you will have a bright future and your hopes will not be cut off. There's a bright future waiting for you. There's a bright future waiting for every young man, every young woman hearing me tonight. That bright future is however dependent on wisdom. In the Amplified Version, the Bible says, So shall you know skillful and godly wisdom. To be thus to your life. If you find it, then shall there be a future and a reward. And your hope and expectation shall not be cut off. What the Bible is telling us that wisdom is important. In Proverbs 4, when you read in verse 5 to verse 8, the Bible says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. He said that in all you're getting, when you read in verse 7, he said wisdom is the principal thing. He said, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And so we are admonishing somebody tonight, get wisdom. And why we are having this conference is so that you can get wisdom. Bible makes us to understand that wisdom is better than money. It is true, the Bible says, when you read in Ecclesiastes 6 in chapter 10, in verse 19, he said, money answereth all things. Money gives everything. But the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, when you read in verse 12, it says wisdom is a defense, money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life 
to them that have it. I think it's better to pursue wisdom than to pursue money. Money will answer many things for you. Money will provide many things. But wisdom will answer everything and will also give you life. I pray that that wisdom will be available to everyone hearing me tonight in the name of Jesus. As young people, we call this a young leaders conference. We in our platform, we are the young adults and youth affairs of this continent. And you begin to wonder, who is a youth? Who is a young adult? The United Nations defined the youth as a period of transition from dependence of childhood to the independence of adulthood. A period of transition from the dependence of childhood to the independence of adulthood and the awareness of the interdependence as members of a community. And so that definition is loaded because it helps us to know that there is a period when you move from being a dependent child to becoming an independent adult. But there's something you must add to that knowledge. There must be an awareness that as a member of the community, there is interdependence of every sector of the community. People of God, you are young, you are youth. The United Nations says that the youth age is between 18 and 35 years of age. It doesn't matter what your age might be actually, but I trust the Lord that your youthful age will begin to produce positive contribution to the society that we have. Where is the future we are talking about? When we say there is a glorious future, what is the future we are talking about? We know that we popularly say that the youth are the future leaders of tomorrow. But our father in the Lord, Pastor Ia Deboye, said to us, he said, the problem of the youth is that they think they will forever be young. They don't know that time is moving. They think that they have time. They assume that tomorrow never comes. And so we want to admonish you tonight that as young men, young women, whose future is going to be very great, very glorious, you must understand that you must redeem your time. The time is very, very short. The Bible says in John chapter 9 verse 4, he said, the night cometh when no man can walk. There is a time to do everything and you can't afford to miss that time. Nelson Mandela, blessed memory, said, the youths of today, they are the leaders of tomorrow. But I said to people, why put till tomorrow what you can do today? Because they have been told that the youths of today are the leaders of tomorrow. Many young people are deferring till tomorrow what they can do today. They are deferring till tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And that is why today you must be determined that the glorious future that God has for you, you begin to step into it. You begin to prepare to get into it in the name of Jesus. Our fathers of faith, the fathers of nations, the fathers of families, they are looking for young people, youths, young adults, who will keep their hard-earned legacies. Young people that will lead their generation even in the right way. Likwan Yu, blessed memory, one of the founding fathers of Singapore, he said in his book, From the Third World to the First World, he said, I write this book for a younger generation of Singaporeans who take stability, growth, and prosperity for granted. I want them to know how difficult it was for a small country that no one thought had any significant worth with no natural resources survived in the midst of larger and stronger economies. And so the reason why histories are written is so that the young man can know the price that was paid for the legacies they are entering into. If our tomorrow is going to be glorious, then we must begin to see the price that our fathers of faith have paid even for the tomorrow that is going to be glorious. Look at the nation of Ukraine being battered and pummeled by a powerful nation, Russia, but being led by a charismatic young man. 
a 44 year old man yet to be 45 and that young man is leading the nation and people are ready to come under his leadership because as a young man <laughs> he's giving leadership even to his nation in the time of war i pray in the name of jesus that you will have an understanding of times as a young man as a young woman and you'll be able to give leadership even to your community in the name of jesus you will understand you are no longer a child that needs to be dependent that you are becoming an adult that needs to be independent and at the same time is aware of the interdependence of members of the community the bible makes us to understand when you read in the book of ecclesiastes chapter 9 he said i returned and i saw that the son that the race is not to the swift, not the battle to the strong, neither yet a bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding. He said, but time and chance happen it to them all. Time and chance happen it to them all. So time is a major factor of the success you have in life. In First Chronicles chapter 12, when you read in verse 32, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. The Bible says they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. He said the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. If your future is going to be glorious, you must have understanding of the time and you must be ready to redeem the time. You must be ready to make sure that the time that you have is being put to maximum use or to the best use i pray this evening by the mercy of god that your tomorrow is all right that your tomorrow is sure in the name of jesus in isaiah chapter 40 the bible make us to understand isaiah chapter 40 in verse 5 the bible says that it's a glory that god is about to reveal he said the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the lord had spoken it there is a glory tomorrow that is about to be revealed when you read in romans chapter 8 between verse 18 and verse 20 that is actually where we have the text for this glorious occasion for the theme of this year the glorious future in romans 8 when you read in verse 18 and verse 19 in the new living translation he said yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that we reveal will be revealed to us later he said for all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when god will reveal who his children really are people of god the whole world is waiting for example the nation of ukraine somehow the whole world has got it to know that that's a nation where the people don't give up that's a nation where their leader may be young but there's something that leader carries and every nation elsewhere wants to listen to them i pray tonight by the mercy of god there's a glory we carry there's something in our dna there's something inside of us that every one of us carry the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are waiting for the revelation of who God's children really are. And the way that will be done is by those children who have understanding of the times. Those are the ones that God is going to reveal. I pray tonight that what you do with your time will make you on the day of revelation to be an asset, to be someone people want to watch, someone people want to listen to someone people want to follow do you know there are some people they look so beautiful but the moment they open their mouth and say one or two things you just want to disappear you wonder what is inside this individual i pray in the name of jesus that the preparation you must put in place so that the glorious future he has marked for you you can step into it you begin to pay that price of time in the name of jesus in galatians chapter 4 when you read in verse 1 to verse 2 the bible says if a man dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children he said those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up even though they actually own everything 
pain that their father had. What that simply means, you must grow up. So let me tell somebody beside you, grow up. If you want to, the, to have the glorious future, if you want that glorious future to be revealed, you can't continue to remain as a child. You must be determined that you will grow up. You must be determined that you will grow up. You remember in Jeremiah chapter 1, when God said, Jeremiah, <laughs> before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah said, I am a little child. There is something God had invested in Jeremiah. He had made him a prophet from the womb. There was a day for that revelation even to be made manifest to humanity when that day came jeremiah said i'm a, a child i cannot do it for everyone to step into that which god has embedded in you what god has planted in you for it to be revealed you must grow up you must not be a child you must rise up i pray tonight by the mercy of god that you are growing up in the name of jesus when you read in first corinthians chapter 13 First Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says in verse 9 to verse 11, he said, for we know in part, we prophesy in part. The Bible says in verse 11, he said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. The issue of young adults or the issue of youth is that is the transition period between childhood of dependence and adulthood of independence and so you will find young adults some who are still behaving like little children such people cannot be entrusted with leadership in the future such people cannot be entrusted with the greatness of the future with the legacies of the fathers the reason is because they have not grown up but the moment you grow up and you drop even those childish things you are simply saying i'm a candidate that can be used i'm an instrument that can be used and i pray in the name of jesus that god will use you in the mighty name of jesus the most i will use you how do you know the candidate that can be used first he must mature and he must not be a little child who is a child and who is the person that is matured he will listen to the story of the prodigal son the prodigal son came to the father and said give me the portion of my inheritance and the father gave him and the bible says in luke when you read in chapter 15 between verse 11 and verse 19 the bible says he wasted that inheritance on riotous living and when his inheritance had finished he came back to his senses he came back to himself and said even in my father's house servant don't eat what i'm about to eat i will go to my father and i will say to him make me one of thy servants i'm not even worthy to be called your child when that prodigal son came back to his senses he went to his father with the mandate make me when a child is behaving like a child all he's asking is give me but the moment you come to your senses and you mature and you grow up your question is no longer give me your question is make me what are you asking god to do for you what are you asking the fathers of faith to do for you what are you asking your biological parents to do for you what are you asking government to do for you if you are still at the level of give me you are a child but if you grow up to the level of make me i want to be an instrument i want to be a vessel i want to be used you remember elisha was following that elijah and elijah said elisha what do you want before i be taken away and elisha said i want double portion of what you carry that i might be your successor that i might continue your assignment what i'm simply saying to you is when a person is a child he's asking for the inheritance that is just to give me when the person becomes a son he's asking for the inheritance of the assignment and he say make me give me double portion of your anointing that i can do the things that you have been doing that i can do the exploits you have been performing i pray tonight by the mercy of god that every young adult listening to me you will be praying this day lord make me daddy make me i want to be an instrument in your hand in the name of jesus and i believe god that god is going to make you and you remember jesus 
when he wanted to when he when 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 he, when he told peter and john that they should cast their net onto the other side and they caught so much fish the bible says in matthew chapter 4 when you read in verse 19 peter was so afraid and he said to him oh just go away from me we are we are we are sinners and the bible says jesus said to him he said follow me and i will make you fishers of men the process of god making us the process of god making you what he wants you to be is in followership the more you follow the leaders of faith the more you follow your predecessors the more you follow those that have been ahead of you the more you are made into what god wants you to be i pray tonight by the mercy of god that god is making somebody somebody is no longer a baby drinking milk somebody has become a matured adult ready to take the mantle ready to do the assignment ready to do the work if you are that person let your amen be louder i want you to shout a big amen i want to show you a few things about people that have matured and have become sons they are no longer little children they have become matured of age and they are now um, sons that can carry out assignments they are sons that can get the work done number one thing i want you to know about sons is that sons will always surpass their fathers it doesn't matter how far their fathers have gone they have a determination that where their father stopped is where they are going to start and they are going to take the work higher i gave you the example of elijah and elisha in second Kings chapter 2 from verse 9 to verse 10 the last miracle of elijah was to part the jordan the first miracle of elisha was to part the jordan there is somebody hearing me as a son indeed who has matured where your fathers of faith has ended that is where you are going to start it simply means to whom much is given much is expected you are going to rise up to the challenge of a glorious tomorrow we thank god for the redeemed christian church of god our fathers took that church even from one nation to over 190 something countries of the world we have to ask ourselves where are we going to take the work from these 190 something countries what are we going to do with this assignment i pray in the name of jesus that where our fathers stopped we will surpass them number two when you become matured as a son you will go beyond the limits that your fathers have rich whatsoever your father said this is our stopping point you will say that is your starting point number three when you are matured as sons we will decide to say to yourself that the work your fathers did not finish you are going to finish it what your fathers did not finish they started they didn't finish do you know the work moses started joshua finished it i want you to know something that every assignment that fathers have started is our responsibility to make sure that assignment assignment is finished to make sure that assignment is completed in the name of jesus number four as a matured son you will look for everything that your father have lost whatsoever it is that is meant to come to the kingdom and the father lost as a son you will make sure that you look for it look at what they said the, the father of saul the bible tells us when you read in first samuel in chapter 9 between verse 1 and verse 6 the bible said there was a man of benjamin his name was Kish, and he said to his son Saul that he go and look for the donkey that we are lost. It was in the process of Saul looking for the donkeys that we are lost that he found his destiny. As you look for what your fathers have lost, the ministries that have been lost, the assignment that have been lost, the flock that has been lost, the disciples that have been lost, as you are determined to gather them and bring them in, child of God, son of the most high, daughter of Zion, your destiny in God it will appear do you remember the story of David he was taking care of his father's flock it was from there that his father sent him an assignment it was by doing the assignment his father gave him that he met with Goliath and he defeated Goliath nobody sang the praise of David when he defeated the lion nobody sang his praise when he defeated the bear but when he defeated Goliath the old nation sang his praise women began to sing Saul killed his thousand we kill tens of thousands there is somebody hearing me as you make the assignment of your father your own assignment what you are simply saying is i have a 
glorious tomorrow. The future of David did not emerge until he took the assignment of his father as his personal assignment. I pray tonight by the mercy of God that you will take over even the assignment of your father. You will turn it into your personal assignment. Number six, and you become a matured son. You rescue the flock of your father. The lion came to take the flock of David's father. But David ran after the lion. His life was at risk. He put his life at risk. And he defeated the lion. When the bear came, the same thing. When Goliath came, the same thing. I pray today that you will also decide to step out and say, it doesn't matter what the battle might be. Over the flock of my father, I arise to defend it. I arise to defend this legacy. I arise to defend this assignment in the name of Jesus. Number seven, Sons don't run away from the vision that their father gave them. They don't run away. They stay with that vision. They pursue it to the end. Look at what the Bible says in Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, between verse 2 and verse 3. He said, write the vision down that they may run with it, that read it. There's a vision of this church. There's a vision of this commission. And there are people that are meant to run with this vision. Our Father and the Lord, Pastor Yadeboye, he shared with us how God spoke to his Father in the Lord and said to him, Parking Naomi, that the vision I gave to you many years is about to start. And when he was interpreting for our Father, our Father in the Lord, the, the, the general superintendent at that time, he shared with him and said the vision was that the church will spread to the entire earth. The church did not spread to the entire earth under Parking Dayomi, but under the leadership of our Father in the Lord, Pastor Ia Deboe, that vision has spread to the entire earth. It was Parking Dayomi that was given the vision, but it was his son that came to run with that vision. I pray today that there is a vision given to our fathers, a vision that has been written down. We will run with that vision. We will run with that vision in the name of Jesus. I want to round off on this note. In Romans chapter 8 verse 19, where we have our text for tonight. He said, all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. All creation is waiting. I want to announce to God. I want to announce to you that their waiting has come to an end because the future has come. The future is now. The children of God are about to be revealed. Who we really are in God is about to be made manifest. Who God has ordained us to be is about to be made known to humanity. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be sons of God, daughters of the Most High, that we say, here I am, use me. I want to conclude on this note. There are two types of children. Those who are babies, and they are not better than servants. Those who grow up and they are ready to take the assignment of the future that their parents or their fathers or their spiritual parents have for them. There are two types of sons. Those who ask, give me. And those who say, make me. There are two types of sons. Those who redeem the time. They have understanding of the times. They have prepared themselves. Somebody says that when opportunity meets preparation, they will say a miracle has been made manifest. I pray in the name of Jesus that every young adult, every young person in the entire continent of America, opportunity is going to meet your preparation. The issue is how prepared are you? Have you redeemed the time? Have you grown up? Are you matured? Are you ready to take the mantle? Are you ready to defend the flock? Are you ready to run with the vision? In these next few days, this two days conference, I believe God that different speakers will be speaking to us. They will equip us with what we need to run with the vision. I thank God for the theme, a glorious future. Rise up on your feet, everybody, wherever you are. And just declare to God, you will not miss your time. You will not miss your time. You will not miss your time. As a young adult, you will not miss your time. Only those that have understanding of the time, they are the ones that their brethren will come to their command. We are raising leaders in this platform. This conference is meant to raise leaders. People who have understanding of their time. Who know what God has called them to do. And then they begin to prepare themselves for it. Waiting for the opportunity to show up. And when your time and chance appear, you will not be found wanting. Father eternal, I thank you for tonight. 
Thank you for this word you have brought to us as an opening charge. We pray that as this conference is declared open today, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we declare that where young men, young women are hearing this message, that there shall be a quickening in our spirit, ready to run with the vision of our fathers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. God had a plan Full of His glory He created the heavens The sea and the land Completed it all With men like Himself Filled with God's glory He breaks through leadership team, the Lord himself who has gathered you together, he will do a great work in your midst and he will do a great work in your time in the name of Jesus Christ. 
while I appreciate the opportunity to come your way, I want to quickly thank God for this continental overseer who has given us the opportunity to have such a time as this. And also, I want to thank God for the Satko in charge of Yaya, that you have uh, thought it uh, good that we should come into your midst. And I thought, I asked myself, so what do they want me to say again today? But I'm trusting God that the Lord will minister to leaders in the house. Because when it comes to building leaders in the house of God, and particularly for the young adults ministry, uh, it takes extra grace to, to, to do certain things. But God will help us in the course of this discussion. Shall we just pray briefly, please? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for the opportunity we have on our hand. Thank you for the people of God that you have pulled together from all across the continent. And thank you for the grace of God upon their lives. Father, we pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will send your word to us. You will send your word to every one of us in the house under the sound of the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you send your word and you heal and you deliver. Send your word that can heal. Send your word that can deliver. And let the life of your people never remain the same again. Let there be a visitation of the Lord in our life. And let us never be the same after this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, uh, we, are, we will be speaking on um, the glorious future. The glorious future. And uh, we are going to be taking our text from Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8, verses number 18 and verse 19. I will read. The Bible says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Let me take the last part of it again. The earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. I want to look at it from this perspective. There is glory temporary and there is glory eternal. There is glory temporal. There is glory eternal. God has ordained us, his own children, to manifest the glory of God out there to manifest the glory of God in time and in eternity. You notice that when Jesus Christ was praying, he prayed in John chapter 17, he said to the Father, glorify me with the glory that I have with you. And when he was leaving, he said that as many as will overcome, I will grant them to sit with me in my throne. Even as I have overcome, have, uh, overcame and I am sitting with my Father in his throne. God has already prepared for us certain level of glory. We, it may differ in, 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 in dimensions, but one thing is sure. There is glory that lies ahead. There is glory temporal and there is glory eternal. Now, when you look at the scripture we read, the Bible says, I reckon that the suffering of this present time. Now, Apostle Paul who worked with God so closely, said we are going to be suffering, we are going to pass through suffering in the present time. Then glory will show forth. He is saying to us that if anyone is going to be a partaker of glory, say take notes, there is also one thing again that you will partake of, which is the pain of the now, the suffering of the present time. So we may suffer for some time, but the end will be in glory. Now, what I have trust God for, for, that God wants me to tell you in this session you have given me, is not so much of whether there is glory ahead or not. For sure, glory lies ahead. Or maybe by way of just trying to pass the message across to us is that we know that when glory comes, shame departs. So, which means the opposite of glory is shame. And shame is evidently an undeniable, undesired state. When you say somebody is ashamed of himself, it's because with the state he founds himself is not what he desires. It's an undesirable status in life or home or career 
or business or in our walk with God. And of course, in eternity, shame will translate to somebody not being able to reign with Christ. Not being able to stand in the presence of God in eternity. It is my prayer that each and every one of you, you will experience glory here on earth and even in eternity. Also, glory can be, there, can be described as a desired state, therefore, in time and eternity. Remember I said, I'm going to be looking at it from time and eternity. I'm not here to teach details of it because the assignment he asked me to challenge you with, it's very direct and straightforward. Why? Because God has promised people glory in time past, but they never inherited that glory. Some of them, God promised them with tokens of his promise. That is to say, a kind of assurance that I am assuring you that this glory is yours. When you do this, this is what you are going to get. But eventually, they didn't get the glory. What God wants me to say, to talk about today, is to tell, to show you how some people did not make it to that point of glory. So that you can guide against it as leaders. Why? Because leaders, they, they carry, when we want to develop leaders in the house of God, I don't always want to call them leaders. I always want to call them shepherd because it carries a different connotation. Yes, we are a leader. That's why some people will call it a shepherd leadership or leadership, whatever you call it. Shepherd leadership is okay for you. That's fine. But in the leadership in the sentence or in that phrase is the emphasize. I want to emphasize the shepherd. You are first of all a shepherd before you lead the people. When you check John chapter 10 very closely, you will notice that Jesus Christ said, some people have come into the fold from through other means and not through the door. So because they did not come in through the door, there are certain things that happen to people at the door. So they now got into the sheep fold. They don't know how to behave like sheep. They are just going to be a leader. And a leader that is not first of all a sheep cannot be a shepherd. It's not possible. And that's the problem we have in our time. But that is not what I am here to teach. What I am here to talk about is that glorious future how will I make it? Glorious future. Glory brings the notion of a desirable state that one will naturally want to remain perpetually there. You want it to be a permanent thing. When you enter into the realm of glory, you say, wow, I love what I'm passing through now. People like glory. People like a time, a place where everything just works. Things just flow. So a glorious encounter or comfortable state of life compared with affluence and wealth, state of sound health, void of threat at all. You call it glory. No threat, no challenging situation. Everything seems to be working fine for you. You say, look, I'm enjoying my glory. No wonder Joseph said, go and tell my father about my glory in Egypt. What was he referring to? That I am comfortably seated on the, on the throne of a prime minister. I don't have any problem with Pharaoh. I don't have any problem with Egypt. No, I'm no longer a slave. Everything works for me. That man is glory. But that is glory temporal. But this time around, we are looking at both the, temp uh, the glory in time and the glory in eternity. The glory of eternity, I want to describe it like this. It's an heavenly splendor. The comfort and honor and beauty of the praise of his presence of God and the state of well-being without fear in the presence of the almighty God, where you just worship him perpetually. Either way, it's a comfortable situation, a desirable situation, either in time or in eternity. If a man fails to get glory in time and eternity, this is what the fellow should expect. Upon the face of the earth in time, that fellow cannot by any means be able to, he will not even enjoy himself. He will not enjoy anything about himself. Everything is not working for him. And when that fellow is in that state, we call it a state of shame. And when we get to eternity dimension and the man is not enjoying glory, the shame is going to be in hellfire. But that shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. Now, pushing what I have said from that verse number 18 to you, 
verse number 18 of chapter 8. The Bible said there is a suffering in the present time. So get ready, brethren, that in this leadership journey that you have, there is going to be uncomfortable situation around you that will threaten your glory, that will threaten the comfort and the desirable situation that you desire upon the face of the earth that you, do, that you want to experience. There is going to be suffering of the present time. But then it is going to be result in glory that shall be revealed in us. Apostle Paul now says that that suffering is not comparable to what is going to be, to, to be revealed. Now, in saying that, no wonder in 2 Corinthians also in chapter number 4, I think to, to, to us that verse number 17 and 18 now, the scripture said to us that we cannot compare our present suffering also to the eternal weight of glory that shall be revealed in us. It's not comparable to the eternal weight of glory that shall be revealed in us. So glory lies ahead. And the scripture call it light affliction. Can you imagine? All the challenges here, suffering in this present time, referenced in this verse number 18, the scripture call it in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, light challenges, light afflictions. So get ready. If you want to be a leader or a shepherd in the house, shepherding young adults, get ready. You are going to pass through certain light afflictions. And I know why I'm emphasizing this to you. Because when we pass through those light afflictions, those sufferings of the present time, those challenges of the time, that is when the devil shows up. And when the devil shows up and it appears as if God, what you promise us, is not showing forth. The devil wants you to deny that God before time, before the time of your manifestation. That is what God wants me to address to you today. Yes, no doubt about it, you are created for a purpose. And that purpose is glory. He knows the thought that he thinks towards us. They are not of evil, but of a glorious end, of peace. And, and, and to, to bring us to a glorious end, an expected end. God knows it, that you desire glory. God knows it, that you desire a very comfortable situation of life. He knows it. And more so, he has promised you. But when we check the scripture... Not everybody that was promised glory eventually got it. And that is where he wants me to concentrate. Yes, you have a glorious purpose ahead of us. When Moses was born, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter number 11, when they were describing the mother and the father of Moses, the Bible says the mother saw him as a proper child. So who is not a proper child? She saw with the eye of faith that Moses has been, has been brought to earth, even though they were supposed to drown them in, 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 red, in, in the Nile. When it came to the case of Moses, he said, we, we could see this guy is a proper child. We cannot bury him in the Nile because God has a purpose. Even so, you say yourself, you are standing, listening to me today, you are a proper child. You have come to the understanding of the Most High God. God has a purpose for you. The reason why Moses was brought to earth was not only to deliver Israel from the land of Egypt, but to take them to the promised land. But we shall see the scripture. A glory that was set ahead of him. Was he able to enter into that glory? Why was he not able to? 600,000 footmen that were with Moses, they were, they were destined for glory in time and in eternity. Were they able to get it done? Let us see the scripture. I will first of all consider Israel. Because you are a leader, you are a shepherd, shepherding the people of God, leading them forward to a glorious inheritance that will be manifested in them as a glory of God in time and in eternity. The Bible tells me in Exodus chapter number 3, Exodus chapter 3 verse number 8. Let's look at what God said here. Verse number 8. It says, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, a glorious future set before the people of Israel and a large Unto a land which, which, which flows with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. So from this statement that God uttered unto Moses, 
there was a glory set ahead of them, which was what necessitated their leaving Egypt. Said, oh, there is a promised land somewhere. There is a glory ahead. We are going to enter into it. And also the glory that my father has promised us upon the face of the earth that is called the manifestation of the sons of God. The sons of God that the devil has no control over. The sons of God that are not going to conform to the, to the activities of, of the now. The sons of God that are not going to conform to the activities of Egypt. The sons of God that will not conform to the activities of Babylon. That is what he has called us to be. But like I told you, he didn't just call us to be that in time alone. He has called us to glory in eternity. There is also an eternal glory dimension of it, which is said in that Second Corinthians chapter number 4 that I pointed your attention to, that our light affliction cannot be compared to the eternal weight that way, eternal scale is there that weighs our glory. It is my prayer that when you get into eternity and they weigh your glory upon the eternal scale, it will weigh so much. But let's leave that for now. So God set glory ahead of the people of Israel. And he said to them, I'm taking you to that glorious land. In that land, you will not need to labor to plow the ground for other people to eat your labor. You will not plow for another man to eat your grace. You will, you will sow your seed, you will harvest your food, and you will eat your food. That's a glorious encounter in, the, in time. That's a glorious encounter in time. And the scripture says that that land will be flowing with milk and with honey. And the, and the, sto and the stones of that land will be like iron. What a glorious day that God has set ahead of them. Now they set out. And hear God in verse number 12. Verse number 12. And he said, certainly, for to assure Moses that they will get there. He said, certainly, I will, bring you, I will be with you. And this shall be a token unto you that I have sent you. That when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you will serve God upon this mountain. That is so sure that that glorious future is certain. The glory that will be manifested in us as sons of God upon the face of the earth is so sure. The scripture said it to us. God will not deceive Jacob. No, I will never call the sons of Jacob to seek me in vain. He won't do that. But then we now notice that the people of Israel, they went out, even from the land of Egypt, and they went ahead of what God asked them to do. No doubt about that. God has promised them the promised land, and they were going forward. And the scripture says, in Numbers chapter 14, verse 25, and before I read that to you, let me explain something to you. Do you know that God had promised them the glorious land? The, he brought them through the wilderness. They went to Mount Sinai. They worshipped God. And they now left Mount Sinai. They were now going into the promised land. They were to cross into the promised land. In less than 11 days, they were almost there. And the Bible says, they call Moses. Shall we send spa in Numbers chapter 11 and 12 to go and check the land? I wouldn't teach you the difficulty of what they did. I, I, I don't let me go into that. Since when have they been consulting with spies. God never sent them to go and spy out the land before they go and possess it. He said, I'm taking you there. He didn't say to them, go and possess the land through the instrument of spy. But let's leave that one side. As a leader, if God has promised you a future, depend on God, not on any individual. They went in there. The Bible says they now came back and brought evil reports. Remember when he promised him in Exodus chapter 3, he was taking them into a glorious land. Glory ahead. A future glory was ahead of them. But the, the, the spy came. He said, excuse me, sir. The land is really flowing with milk and honey. There is glory in the land. But you know what? We cannot possess it. Which words should they depend upon? The words of God or the words of man? Future, glorious, glorious future ahead. And the glory in time is what I'm using to make this illustration. Now, the scripture now said that when they argue with Moses, God appeared and said to them, listen, I promise you, Moses, that I'm taking all of you to that promised land. And I gave you instruction that you should take them to the promised land. These people have come back with their evil report in time now. And you have listened to them and it appears as if they are not ready to go. Say, listen to me, Moses. They are not going into that promised land again. Wow. Which means the glory promised them is now being denied. Why? 
because they fail to believe God. This is where my lesson is there for you today. Every one of you as leaders, God has already ordained it that your assignment, your purpose in life, in among the Yaya, Yaya community is going to be glorious. In the midst of the affliction, the Bible tells us when we read it, you said that the suffering of the present time, in the midst of the suffering of the present time, in the midst of the light affliction, in the midst of the challenges of the now, are you able to believe God that glory lies ahead? Because this is where most of us fail. Sir, we have men of God falling left, right, and center. We have men of God deconstructing their faith. We have men of God telling you, they tell you men of God are falling in sexual, sexual immorality. They are, used, they, are, they are failing ministry. All because in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the affliction, they fail to believe God. Young leaders, you are just coming up. Are you going to fail God for your generation? There is no doubt about glory. The promised land is there. Nothing will reduce the status of a promised land from being a promised land. It's a glory ahead. He promised him in Exodus 3.8, I'm taking them in there. But something happened. They couldn't get there. They were unable to trust God. And as long as you also, you are unable to trust God, I'm sorry, the promised land will be denied. But you know the danger of it? You, it is not only the promised land in time, but the promised land in eternity. That is the most dangerous one. The glory in the now and the glory in the eternity. It is out of place for children of God to be begging bread in time. That's a glorious end that God has decided to bring us into that we will not beg bread. So if you are a leader in the house, a shepherd, shepherding the people of God, prepare yourself to become what I call failure, do a kind of what I call a failure proof ahead of time. You have seen those who are falling left, right, and center. Not because the glory is not there. The glory lies there in ministry. The glory of ministry is for a servant of God to stand and say, if I be the servant of God, this is what is going to happen. That is what you want to do. But before you can do that, A, the suffering of the present time, the light affliction of the now, that is in the midst of it is where the devil will come and challenge you and tell you, are you going to trust God? Do you think God is going to take you to that promised land? He's going to take you to that glory in the future? God has it in place. The Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 14, 25, the scripture says, now the Amalekite and the Canaanite dwelt in the, in the valley. Tomorrow, says the scripture, turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Meaning what? You are not going to, the, to, to, to glory anymore. Why? Because you did not trust God. Brethren, as you are studying at the feet of Jesus Christ, glory in the future is as sure as yesterday. The glory in the future in time and in eternity is as sure as yesterday. But will you, out of unbelief, Turn into the wilderness. And the scripture, oh, let, let me read the scripture to you. Look at verse number 32 and verse 33 of that Numbers chapter 14. Very painful. Chapter number 14, 32 and 33. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your wardom until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness and I put in front of it of life. Now, why is he asking me to tell you this? It is, God is not weak to bring a man into glory. No. God is not weak to bring a man into eternal glory. Two of them, I define it to you. But one problem we have is that God is looking for a man who will believe. Until you believe God, that the sons of God will be manifested and you walk uprightly, then you don't deserve to witness the glory of God. But the scripture now said to me, as many as will not trust him, that that future glory is there for them to manifest the glory of God and the beauty of God upon the face of the earth. And what is the glory and the beauty of God? Hey, permit me to digress a little bit. I'll come back here. The Bible says of Jesus Christ, did I not tell you if only you will believe, you will see the glory of God. So what does that mean? It is the glory of God to raise the dead. It is the glory of God to heal the sea. 
It is the glory of God to stand and say, I am the servant of God. As you go for your, for your interview tomorrow, the Lord will grant you permission. They will answer you. It is you they will give that job. And it is the glory of God for a minister of God and a leader. They bring cases across to you and say, what is the problem? They say, this is the situation on our hand. And you'll be able to say, shall we pray? Not that shall we go and get doctor's report. That's, there's no glory in that. An unbeliever can do that. The glory in time that must be manifested is such that you see an empty chairs on a, a church full of empty chairs. And you say, as the Lord leave it, in this dry land of wilderness, the Lord will fill all these chairs. And you begin, you begin to look at you and say, yeah, are you sure? That's what a leader does. And when they come back in about three or four, five months time, they say, Pastor, what did you do? Say, I didn't do anything. It is the glory of God to command people to come from all over the place into the tabernacle without you moving an inch. God can do it. So, but in, the, in their own case, the scripture now said, I go back to my statement. The Bible says, your, your carcasses will be wasted in the wilderness. What that means is this, if there are so many children of God, they are carriers of glory. They were supposed to manifest it. But because they could not trust God, all of them are wandering in the wilderness of life and they are wasting away. And some of you listening to me, you know what God has called you to be. You know how he has ordained you that, look, I'm asking you to give your life to Jesus Christ because I'm taking you to a glorious future. And of course, because of, you know what you have done. So those useless, illicit relationships that you have gotten yourself into that has denied you the power of God and you are unable to get into that promised land in time. Not even in eternity yet. In time. You are supposed to have been able to heal the sick by now. You know it. You are supposed to be able to decree and it begins to come to pass. Because God is not into material world alone. He's into eternal dimension. Such that the children of God, what is the joy of a leader in Christendom? And even in time that we are, it is for him to control, to bring the power of God to bear to time. So that people will say, wow, this is God in action. God is looking for you. Don't be like one of them who, instead of getting into the promised land, they denied God. They did not believe him. Unbelief will turn a man into wilderness of life. We are all their carcass, and the good thing about their life will be wasted. That shall not be your portion. That is the instruction he said, as you come and give you, that he told Moses, I'm taking them to the promised land, not into the wilderness. But unfortunately, they ended up in the wilderness. Was it not God that delivered Moses? Was it not God that delivered Moses? The scripture said to me, as far as the people of Israel is concerned, that, no, I'm going to waste your carcass in the wilderness, but as for Moses also, when God called Moses, I'm changing from a nation to an individual now. He told him, he said, Moses, come here. I'm going to send you to Egypt. You are going to bring the people out of the land and you are taking them to the promised land. Not only are you taking them to the promised land, you will bring them in there and you will celebrate me. But may I ask you one question? What happened that Moses did not get into the promised land? The glory that lies ahead, a desirable status, a desirable state of life in time. That is why, that's why, I, I, and I repeat, that was why Joseph said, you see the glory around me, you see my life. In the day I was enthroned, they dashed me wife. I didn't have to go and propose. And they did not even take dowry from me. It was the king that paid my dowry. What less full of glory do you want other than that? Eh? And the man enjoyed his life. He said, go and tell my father about all my glory in Egypt. And they went. They said, eh? if you see your son in Egypt, hey, he's second in command to nobody but Pharaoh. Nobody there said anything to him. He's a powerful man Anything he wants, get done. Is that not glory? How many of you, you are seeking to be government official all over the place? You are looking for position, all because there is power. So that when you cough like this, certain things will happen. That's glory. Yes. You think, because even me, self, I, I like glory. But then, I don't seek for it because I know God has promised me already. It doesn't matter. All I need to do is to believe him. And the scripture says, for Moses, he said, Moses, yeah, we are going to the second lesson. The first lesson is unbelief kept them away from the glory that God has promised them. This one, we want to look at Moses. The Bible says that God called Moses. When they get to that Numbers chapter 20, the people of Israel, you know, they have now left 
uh, the fact that they cannot enter the promised land, they have turned them into the wilderness. Now we go to chapter 20. And Moses was still the leader. And there was glory lying ahead of him. You will take them to the promised land. God he didn't deny it until that point. What happened? The Bible says they needed water. And instead of Moses to shout on them, he just said, okay, let me go to God. And he asked God, Father, how do we get water for these people? Of course, they almost provoke him. Remember, I have told you, in the midst of afflictions, in the midst of challenges, is where that glory is going to manifest. But don't allow the afflictions and the challenges of our time to make you deny that glory yourself. The Bible says they cry against Moses. And no sooner they cried against Moses, the Bible says God told him, take the rod from off the, off the altar and go and stretch it before the people to the rock. And as soon as you stretch the, 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 the rod, water will come out there. But because Moses was annoyed, by the time he came out, we eat the rod. He said, you rebels, shall we bring water out of the rock for you? Yes, we will bring it out. How many of them are bringing water out? Sir, in your leadership assignment, it is not you and God. It's only God that is working through you, sir. Get that one into your brain and into your system and into your fabrics of your life. It is not, you don't know how to lead the people of God. You cannot. Nobody can shepherd the people of God. God is the one that is shepherding them through us. So as a young adult and leader in the house, there is glory that lies ahead of you. If you know how to maintain your head and know that it is not me, it is not you, no matter how much of a bad degrees that you have, I don't care. It works for you, yes, but it, is no, it doesn't work in the ministry just like a bad statistics. It's not science. It's not science. It is God that is at work in you. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 13. So you need to understand that. So the Bible now said he came out and he shouted on them and instead of him to remember the instruction, the Bible says he just went there and struck the rock twice. The danger. Water came out, but he has missed it. I'm not going to teach you that one. Water will always come out. God will always be honored. But sir, the man that dishonored God will never witness glory. So number two that we are talking about, learn the secret of honoring God. Number one is to believe God. Then you will enter into that glory. Number two is to learn the secret of honoring God. Look at that numbers. Numbers chapter number 20. Let me read verse number 8 to you. He said, take the rod. Let, let me quickly jump to verse number uh, 12, number 11. And Moses lifted up his rod. And with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And the, waters, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank. And their beasts also. But look at verse number 12. And the Lord called him and said, speak to Moses and Aaron. Come here, come here. You did not believe me. You, because you did not believe me or you did not, and you did not sanctify me. To sanctify means that follow his instruction and honor him. Look at the last statement there. In the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Which means you will not enter into that glory. Do you know what it means to be a, a president that secure independence for your nation? Your name will be in the history of that, of that nation. But suddenly, Baba said, you are not going there. Now, I reminded you a statement. The mother of Moses, I said it before, the mother of Moses said, this is a proper child that was brought upon the face of the earth for a purpose, to deliver the people of Israel and take them into the land of promise. May I ask you a question? Did he, did he take them to the land of promise? No. He did not enter into the glory that has been prepared for him. Do you know that when they were in the land of Egypt, Moses, he knew also that God has brought him upon the face of the earth for this particular purpose, so that he can deliver the people of Israel. No wonder, that was why in chapter 2, the Bible says he went out during the day. He saw an Egyptian and an Israelite, and an Israeli. He looked left and right, and he killed the Egyptian and buried the man. Because he knew that God had sent, he knew it. He was born for that purpose. Heaven has designed it that is the one that will take them into glory. There was a glory that lies ahead. Maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about. It was a glory that God has preserved for Obama to be the first black president of America. Can you imagine the glory that was accorded him? 
until tomorrow his name is in the book. If forever they will pay him his salary until eternity comes. That's a glory that anybody wants to. Are you not struggling all over the place to look for your pension plan? And the man has just sat down now, enjoying his life because he entered into that glory. So also Moses was created, was brought to earth to enter into glory in time and in eternity. And the glory in time, I think I will tell you with all due respect, he failed to enter into that glory. Why? He did not honor God. Young adults, as you go seeking for glory that lies in the future, learn the secrets of honoring God. Learn the secret of honoring God. Number one, believe him. Number two, honor him. When you honor him, the Eli, Phineas, Ophni and Phineas, they refused to honor God. He said, I have promised you that you are going to have a perpetual priesthood, but now I'm changing my mind. The glory that I placed in your family, I am withdrawing it. You see God? So you need to understand the way to work with God. You don't work with God with data and systems and science and begin to analyze and say, God understands. No, he doesn't. You must do it according to his counsel so that the glory that lies in future. Do you know that the scripture said to me that Moses was denied and Moses went back to God and he cried and said, Father, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Don't allow me, don't deny me this glory of bringing them into the promised land that you have already ordained that I should come and do. That is the reason why I was born, Lord. Let me take them there. That's what, what you told me on Mount Sinai, that, oh, you are going to take them to, out of Egypt and you come and worship me here. And now, Lord, you are denying me. Say, no, it's not me. It is you that fail to honor me. And those that fail to honor me, I will treat them, I will, I will lightly esteem them. And he cried to God again, and God made a terrible statement. God will not make that statement to you. He said, Moses, don't ask me that matter anymore. The glory denied. Do you know that eternal glory was going to be denied Moses? How do I know? The Bible says the devil showed up to contend for the body of Moses. I said, this man disobeyed you now. What are you telling me? He's not coming to eternity. And God has to step in so that the man will not fail in glory in time and the glory that lies in eternity. I don't know what messages you have heard today, but I'm telling you, brethren, if you can believe God, and if you can honor God, glory that lies in future will become inevitable. It is just for take. Now, I know my time is fast spent. Let me quickly show you a scripture before I go into the next one I want to show you. Because when it comes to the matter of obedience, it's very, very key. When it comes to the issue of glory, the glory that God has prepared for us, he has settled it since the time, since foundation of the earth. He didn't just decide it now. Ah, time will not help me. Look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number four. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter four, verse number three, he said, for we which have believed do enter into rest. We enter it as a continuous tense. Do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. That was when he was telling the people of Israel that they will not come in. But look at the last phrase there. The Bible says, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, which means in the record of God, glory is written ahead of you. From the foundation of the earth, when you were born in eternity, before you came into time, God already wrote it there that as far as Femi Olawale is concerned, there is glory for you in time and there is glory for you in eternity. There is glory of the manifestation of the sons of God here on earth and there is glory of the sons of God in eternity. It is now left for me to believe God. God said as part of his plan for them from eternity, from the time the work of God has been put in place, is to bring them into that promised land that is flowing with milk and honey. So what God has decided to do before I was born and from the creation of the earth, certain things can derail it. Unbelief derailed it. Even though God has written it, God will say, I have written it too. Even though I have written, the only thing that will, uh, that will happen here is that it will not come at the time I have decided to show it to you. So go into the wilderness and spend 40 years. Then I will now come back and fulfill it. The glory I promised Moses. So also, 
when he was bringing them out of the promised land, uh, uh, Egypt and taking them to the promised land, Moses, he said, Moses, it is you that I ordained to take them into the promised land. But you did not honor me. I wrote it in the book from the foundation of the earth that, Femi, you will be in Ottawa. You will be in Canada. No wonder when I was refusing to come, I was just enjoying my life. I said, but God, let your will be done. His will got done and I found myself here. Learn that secret. When you know you are doubting, Turn it over to God. Let your will be done. And you will see God help you and bring you into that glory. Too many of us, our leaders, we are missing the glory that God has ordained for us and we suffer for it. Let me talk to you about my friend, Samson. Samson was a man that God has already placed so much upon, so much authority upon his life, power and resolution to be able to go to possess the land of his enemy. And the scripture says that this man, everywhere he went, everywhere he went, he was winning the battle of life. What a glorious one. You know, the, the Philistines saw him. They said, wow, this man that looks like Pastor Lawali, where is the source of his strength? How can this man, tiny man like this, be dealing with every one of us? And they seek to look for him. And they seek him for him. The Bible says that they went and hired an harlot. But you know why we got to that point? Every time a child of God, a leader to be in the house, when you fail to keep your token of consecration, the token of your consecration, I tell you one thing, you will miss the glory. The Bible says God instructed the mother. Say you must not touch any alcohol. You must not take anything that is of the fruit of the vine that is fermented. Don't touch it. And as far as this boy is concerned, you must not touch the hair of his head. Don't touch it. Make sure that the guy grew a Nazarite and let him grow a dreadlock. That is what I want and my power will rest upon him. And the mother took every, every caution necessary. Even the father said, let the angel come again so that he can tell us what we should do. Young leaders, listen to what I want to tell you. You cannot say you want to serve God at your own time. And you expect glory to come. It will not come. God is not a respecter of any person. If I, Uluwafemi Olawali, refuse to honor God with the talking of my Nazarites, my father will reject me. God is not, there is no general overseer. There is no bishop. There is no primate or whatever. Call them anything. As far as God is concerned, if you don't follow the talking of your Nazarites, he will deny you. He said, that glory, forget it. Mr. Uh, Samson, they told him, before we gave birth to you, this is what God told us, that glory lies ahead of you, both in time and in eternity. And if you will keep, take care of the tokens and the, and, and of your covenant, then that glory is guaranteed. Every one of you, under the sound of my voice, God has called you to be a Nazarite, a born-again child of God. There are certain things you must never touch. There are certain things you must, there is no level of anointing you carry in ministry that will say that we allow you to touch them. You cannot. Because if you touch them, may I tell you what, bye-bye to glory. There is no glory for you in future, here, in time, nor in time, or in eternity. Now, the Bible now says to us, he must not, a Nazarite must not touch a dead body. The scripture says to us in that Judges chapter 14, the man went about, he killed a lion, and he left the lion, and he, of course, don't let me tell you another story about him. Then he now found a wife in a strange land, and they said they want to go and marry that woman. And when they were going to marry the woman, the Bible says, Samson turned aside to see the dead carcass of the lion. And when he got there, he didn't care. He must not touch a dead body, you know, in Nazareth. And, he was, and the Bible said there was a wasp, a, 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 a honey wasp, or whatever, inside the place. And he just touched it, and first of all, put it in his mouth. And he now took some of it and gave it to his mother and his, and his father. And the scripture made a reference. He said he did not tell them where he got it from. Because he knows too well that if he had told them that I brought it from a dead body, they say, yeah, my son, a Nazarite. You, are touch, you touched what? A dead body? <sighs> You're supposed to be an eagle. You're supposed to be flying high. A born again child of God a leader in the yaya, and you are now toiling around with dead, dead works of life, dead works of iniquity behind the scene, and you are thinking because nobody sees you, and you say, we are going for a glory in the future. We are going to bask in the glory of God. Excuse me, sir. You have touched dead body. There is no glory in the future. You need to repent. 
The second thing that happened there, not only did he, I mean, touch the dead body, he ate from the dead body, and not only that, Judges chapter 16, verse 1, the scripture says, the man now went ahead and saw an allot in the land of, uh, in the land of Gaza and went in unto her and slept. Ah, you call yourself born again and you are sleeping with girls and you are here in this conference, you want to say uh, the glory lies ahead. There is no glory. There is no glory because when you are defiling the, the tokens of your Nazarites, glory cannot flow. And that was what this man did. He went, he not only did he touch dead body, he now went and slept with an harlot. Even before he went to sleep with an harlot, before that time, the Bible says, when they got to a place where he wanted to take his wife, they spoke to the people, and now he now went back to take his wife, and they threw a party, and they were enjoying themselves. And all of a sudden, he said, I want to give you a riddle. I want to give you a riddle. Out of a strong come the, the, food, the eater, and out of the eater come the food. Excuse me. You see, the man has defiled his talking of Nazarite. And he has he's now started using it as a redo. You see, you are born again as a child of God. You are a, you are, you are a child of the kingdom. And you, are now, you have now slept with a lady. You know, I said, uh, uh, how many of you can tell us how does a lady look like? Uh, when I was an unbeliever, when I was an unbeliever, and I just gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I fell once, and they just did it. Everybody, excuse me. Instead of you to fall on your face and be crying, you are denying yourself of the future glory. Even in time and in eternity, this man was playing with his talking of Nazareth that he has broken. And he didn't make any, 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 anything to him. And he played with it and went away. As the Bible says, after seven days, they pressurize him and it goes, they gave them the answer. Say he's a lion and a honey in the honey web inside a lion. And he can eat it and say, excuse me, this man has failed. Can you also, you are listening to me now, we'll soon round up. Are you able to think back some of the things that you have made joke out of, especially those things that you use to break your token of your Nazarite sheep to God? The man was playing with it. The scripture said to me, don't give that which is holy to dogs. They will turn around and rend you. I see some of you, when you, want to start, when you want to eat food or when you want to play with your friend, you begin to speak in tongues. What do you want to do? It's just because you want to collect food item from your friend. Excuse me, you are playing with the seal of your Nazarite ship. When it is time for glory to show up, when it is time for you to cast out demons, a demon will say, you think I'm a rice? That you are, you are, you are playing with tongues over? Or you think I'm a mala? That you are playing around? Sir! May I tell you one thing? If you do not wake up unto the tokens of your Nazarite sheep and stand on it, there's no glory. Instead of you to experience glory, shame will come. The demons will slap you three, four times. Then you will know that it is not good for you to play around with your token of Nazarite sheep. The scripture said to me that the man lost his glory. The Bible says, hmm, the dreadlock of his head that his father and his mother never touched. He opened his mouth and said to an ordinary alert, he said, you know what? Since the day I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I have never kissed any lady carelessly. I have never touched any lady carelessly. In fact, I don't even touch their materials. He said, but the day I ever, I know that the day I ever do this, hey, the devil said, hey, you have told me your mind. Hey. That was when the halots now came. He said, call all the, all the men of, Egypt, of uh, Philistine. He said, come, he has told me his mind. His father and mother has never touched his hair before. He said, if we cut it, then there is no power. And the scripture said to me, they invited people and they cut it off. Sir, they removed his glory. A lot of all these are young girls that you are in the leadership position. And you don't think it is wrong for you to go and be defiled. And they just deflower you all over the place. And just say it's one of those things. And enjoy your life. Excuse me, sir. You are wasting your time. You need to go back to God and cry to him. Because glory lies ahead. It has been finished before the foundation of the earth. It's there. But your conduct concerning your talking of Nazarite ship will define whether you are going to enjoy glory or not. Glory in time and in eternity. And thank you for the life of Joseph. The scripture says, he declared to that woman, 
how can I commit this sin and sin against God? No, my master has done me well. There's no reason. If he had not insisted on righteousness, that's the fourth one I want to tell you. If he had not insisted on righteousness, the glory that he said, go and tell my father about this glory, he will never have attained it. The same thing happens to us, brethren. I don't know where you are. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you are hiding. I don't know why God wants me to go this route. Honestly, I would have loved to talk about the glory of serving God and the glory of laying hands on the sea and in eternity, the number of crowns and the glory that lies ahead of all. But he said, no. Tell them what can deny them the glory. Even though I have ordained it from the foundation of the earth, I am God. Some of you will say, God doesn't change. Whatever he has said, it will stand. Excuse me, that's not true. God will change when the challenges of time shows up. Oh, yes. He changed in the case of Eli, Ophini, and Phineas. He changed in the case of Moses. He said, I, yes, I told you I'm taking you there, but I'm not taking you there anymore. He changed in the case of the people of Israel, and he denied them the glory. And only their children went into the glorious land, and the glory that lies ahead of them became that of their children. Sir, you are a leader in the house, but I would like to say you are a shepherd. And as you want to shepherd the people with glory, I am not ashamed of anything that is going to happen around me where I pastor. I just tell God, what do you want us to do? We pay the price and you do whatever you want to do. That's all. In fact, people will think that I do a lot of struggling in the secret chamber. No, sir. I only commit my life to God, commit the situation to God, and God does wonderful works beyond imagination. Even you, as you are going forward as a shepherd leader in the house, number one, learn to believe God. Number two, learn to honor God. Number three, learn to keep the talking of your Nazareth. You are a born again child of God. Don't go, don't go and be mingling with the people of the world. Behave as if you are not a child of God. And number four, in the life of most, um, Joseph, maintain righteousness. Let your righteousness stand for you in the day before the Lord. And God will say, this is my righteousness. That was why he pointed to Job. Say, Job is a righteous man in the land. A faithful man, that which I prepare for him, he will enter into it. God will say the same thing about you. Young leaders, young shepherd, as you pastor and shepherd the member of the Yaya in the entire community and the entire continent, let those four guide your paths. Don't ever cross the line of disobedience. No, sir, don't cross it. Don't ever cross the line of not honoring God. Don't cross it. Don't ever cross the line of despising your tokens of Nazarites. Don't cross it. And don't ever cross the line of righteousness. Righteousness will exalt even a nation. Sin is a reproach. Shall we pray? Father, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before your children. The future glory in time and in eternity. Father, please do not let them miss it. The Bible says Samson came out and he shook himself again. Said, I will go as of the other time. But he didn't know that the glory has departed. Father, shall not be our portion. Every one of your sons and daughters, you will keep them. And they will have testimony. Thank you, Father. And as we go, we declare upon them, go and prosper as a shepherd leader. Go and enter into the glory that God has prepared for you. Go and enter into that future glory that lies in eternity also. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Continental Youth Council Leadership of Yaya the Americas, Pastor Kunle Amotosha, Continental Youth Coordinator, CYC, and SATCO, America, USA. Pastor Ayo Adejumobi, Deputy Continental Youth Coordinator, and SATCO, Canada. Pastor Olumide Johnson Fatokun, Chief Operations Officer, COO, Canada. Pastor Fola Ojuola, Director, Yaya Academy, USA. Pastor Yetunde Folami, Director of Operations, Yaya Academy, USA. Pastor Oyelaya Adeniyi, Director, Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR, Suriname, South America. Pastor Omoniyi Muyede, Missions, Mexico. Pastor Femi Debo Omidokun, Director, Admin Canada. Pastor I.T. Umo, President, Yasm Canada. Pastor Marakinyo Umo Dumu, President, Yasm USA. Pastor Emmanuel Adewale, 
Director, Campus Fellowship and Vice President, Yasm USA. Paul Awede, Deputy Director, Multimedia, Canada. Pastor Odilie Ajayi, Yasm Pastor, Caribbean. Pastor Olumide Omotayo, Director, Events and Programs, USA. Shola Oluwashino, Secretariat, USA. Peter Hastrup, Director, Sport and Special Duties, Canada. Tola Ajayi, Director, Prayer, Canada. Olubukola Akindeinde, Director, Accounts, USA. Timi Oluwatosi, Director, Accounts, Canada. Hi, everybody. God bless you. This is Tommy Favored. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to be with you all this year. Um, we just praise God for the glorious future ahead that we have in Jesus Christ. And uh, we're just grateful. So I wanted to answer a few of your questions. Uh, the first one says, when did I know that what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, I would say uh, probably at a very young age, you know, God always speaks to us and tells us where he wants us to be in life you know either through um just our hearts or through in my case i grew up in church and so i had a lot of spiritual leaders who would speak over me and say you know told me god has called you to do this god has called you to do that and i didn't always believe it <laughs> i didn't always know how it would happen but i think i always just i just kind of knew one thing for me is my worship i knew every time i would just stop and sing um, it felt like I was singing to an audience of one. It always made me feel like God was in the room when I would sing. And so I knew there was something special about my worship and something special about every time I was in a chaotic mindset or I was stressed or frustrated about something. I just knew if I got into the presence of God, every time I would open up my voice to sing to him, his presence, his peace would fill my life. And I always want to be in that place. And so um, I felt it was just a privilege and an opportunity to keep doing that. So I do that every time I get the opportunity to do so. Sometimes it gets to be in front of people, but most times it's between me and God. So I'm just grateful that God allows my personal worship to spill over into public worship, I guess, where I can encourage other people to join me as I worship God. Amen? Amen. Okay. I am just blown away at everything I've heard today so far, and I cannot tell you how much I've already gained. In Matthew 6.33, it talks about seeking the kingdom first, and that means being kingdom-minded and having a desire to shine the light of Christ into every nation across the Americas. This event is one of the tools that we use to share the gospel. And with your gift today, we can use it to make this event even bigger and better than it already is and shine our light even brighter across every nation. This is our opportunity to give and be a part of that vision. Thank you and God bless you as you give. You are the
When I entered the fog, boldly stepped in like a cub in a lion's garment, I felt more confident than I had ever before. But as I opened my eyes, my heart sunk. I had assumed that as I stepped out boldly in faith, the fog would become clearer to me. I would begin to understand, unravel the mysterious cloud, which I spent ages debating to even enter. I assumed that after the first step, or at least the next, I would be there. The paradise beyond. I would receive the prize for my bravery. I thought the scariest part of the entire process was entering the fog. No, the scariest part is the fog. The one that remains for as long as God allows it. So now I'm standing here, unable to see in front of me, unable to look behind me, unable to see beyond the thickness of the cloud around me. And I must stand here, in faith, without sight, without knowledge, without anything but Him. Stepping into the fog was never the real test. It was simply my agreement to take the exam in the first place. And as I stand here, panicked and overwhelmed with anxiety, my spirit tells me, this is where we build your faith. This is where we determine what you are made of. This is where you become. Just a prayer Just a prayer
Greetings of grace to you all over the region of America. Thank you so much for the privilege of bringing you the word of the Lord even at this um, leadership conference. I am honored every time I have the privilege to serve Jesus in any capacity. And I want to say a big thank you to all the organizers. Thank you so much, the entire pastorate around Redeem and all who have made this a possibility. I pray that um, within the moments that I have to share, to bring God's word to you, that it will truly bless you. It will transform everyone who hears. And um, the truth of God's word are unbending. They will always walk if and when understood and applied with faith. And so I'd like us to pray together wherever you are um, connecting those in the auditorium there and then those who are connecting across the globe. Let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to us. Father, thank you for the privilege to serve you. Thank you for the honor that you have given to bring your word to your people. I pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ, that the sessions that we have together would be most profitable bless your people challenge your people inspire your people even by the power of the holy spirit and that on account of this teaching we will go from glory to glory and grace to grace and we vow that forever jesus will be praised and exalted for in jesus name i pray amen and amen Please turn your Bible with me. I'm teaching along the team of the conference. Turn your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. I'm teaching very briefly on the demands for a glorious future. Again, the demands for a glorious future. That was the theme I was given. And um, we want to explore what it takes um, it is very clear from scripture before we begin our reading is very clear from scripture that everyone is destined for a glorious future in Christ uh, however unfortunately not everyone would be able to walk in the reality of that glorious future for various reasons as will be seen but it is a fact that God intends for every believer in Christ to walk in the fullness of of his or her glorious destiny in Christ. Let me read Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. One more time. I know the thoughts. So God is thinking about me. He's thinking about you. And he says these are thoughts that ultimately culminate to your peace. And not of evil to give you an expected end it is very clear from scripture that God is thinking about me he's thinking about you and that he intends for us to have an experience a glorious future the word destiny is a short form of the word destination it means where you are going where you have been mandated to go in Christ as far as your purpose and assignment is concerned right so when we talk about destiny we mean your preordained preordained pathway the pathway that you should take as um as written in the script of your destiny in fact he said lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me as it is written of me when you read luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 from verse 15 the bible says jesus entered their temple and he taught in their synagogue the bible says he was being glorified of all and then verse 16 16 says he came to nazareth where he had been brought i'm reading luke 4 and now verse 16 where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read 17 and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet isaiah the bible says when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written 
the spirit of the lord is upon me he said because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised 19 to preach the acceptable year of the lord 20 very instructive verse the bible says he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all of them were fastened upon him and you know he began to tell them that this is now the fulfillment 21 now he began to say to them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears in other words i have found where it's been written concerning my destiny may you find where it has been written concerning you in the name of jesus christ now midwifing every prophecy listen carefully now listen carefully every glorious destiny in christ comes as a prophetic script listen that means everything you are to become and everything you are to do as far as your contribution towards kingdom come is concerned it always comes as prophecy this book this prophetic book you call the bible is a compendium of not only the character of christ it contains the prophetic blueprint of everyone's destiny in christ this book that we call the book of the law you call it the bible you call it scripture hidden within this book is the prophetic roadmap and the prophetic blueprint of everyone's glorious destiny in christ it is your assignment to number one find by the help of the spirit where it has been written concerning you but then more importantly when you find that it has been written concerning you you must understand the pathway and the principles that connect prophecy and manifestation midwifing every prophetic um, speaking about your destiny and its actualization are a set of kingdom principles i want to teach you most believers know what god has called them to do most believers intend and desire to maximize and fulfill their destinies in christ but very few understand the price and the principles it would take to move from prophecy to manifestation one more time from prophecy to manifestation i want to walk you through about six keys six biblical principles that can help you transit from the prophetic speakings about your destiny to its actualization and i want you to listen very carefully take notes if you can take notes you should take notes so that you hide this in your heart and you walk in keeping with these truths i give you a guarantee in the name of the lord jesus christ that if you pay attention to these principles they will shift you from the realm of just having a prophetic awareness of your place in life and destiny to its manifestation may the lord help us in the name of jesus christ number one the first principle that comes as a demand for a glorious future is the power of vision the power of vision the power of vision proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 very popular scripture the power of vision the bible says where there is no vision the people perish where there is no vision what is vision a prophetic picture of where you are going what is vision the ability to see things as they should be not as they are vision is very powerful vision is very important it sets your life on course there are many believers who love jesus sincerely but they are not able to take strategic steps towards destiny actualization principally because they lack vision they pray they go to church they are sincere they are well intentioned but they lack vision vision is very powerful in jeremiah chapter 1 jeremiah chapter 1 when you read from verse 11 jeremiah chapter 1 this was a discourse between the young boy jeremiah and the god of heaven who was announcing to him his call and preordination 
Moreover, verse 11 now, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? What do you see? And he said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Verse 12, he said unto him, thou hast well seen. In other words, you have seen correctly amplified, we say. He says, I will hasten my word. The word and the vision you have seen, I will give it the strength for performance. Vision is very powerful. Among the many things that vision achieves in the life of the believer, the visionary, is number one, vision gives you a legitimate ground to say no to many things. If you are not a man or a woman of vision, it is going to be very difficult for you to say no to many things. And you don't have to say no to only sinful and wrong things. There are many good things that should not be part of your um your the blueprint of your destiny they may be good but they may not be profitable for you you see so vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no primarily no to sin primarily no to anything that is antichrist but much more than that no to things that may be good but maybe not profitable for the, the path destined and preordained for you. There are many good things in life that are not necessary as far as the prophetic description of your destiny is concerned. Vision gives you that legitimate ground. Number two, vision gives you focus. Vision gives you focus. A visionary person is also a very focused person. You coordinate your energy, you coordinate your resources, spiritual resources, material resources, intellectual resources towards a common goal, towards a predefined something very specific. You stop shadow boxing and running around trying to do everything. Vision gives you focus. Let me tell you this. Vision helps you select the people and the conditions that matter most in your life. Vision would help you to select the right spouse. Vision will help you to select the right friends. Vision will help you to select the right location. Many things depend on vision. So if you do not have vision in your life, chances are excellent that you're going to live your life hoping that circumstances just decide the things that you become or you do. May God forbid that over your life in the name of Jesus. So this is a call for someone listening, someone hearing, someone following. It's time that you sat down with your destiny to look very carefully. Am I, am I living a life of vision? What motivates me when I wake up in the morning? What motivates me? What justification do I have to lie down and sleep? What would I say I've done with the gift of the 24 hours per day that I've been given? You see, let me tell you this. The unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving a part of your destiny to. And you must ensure that you are governed by vision. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, number two is the power of light. The second key that you would need, the demand for the kind of destiny that brings glory to the name of the Lord is the power of light. High level spiritual illumination. You need knowledge. This is a kingdom that operates by light. I come again. This is a kingdom that operates by light. It operates by knowledge. You cannot use guesswork. You cannot use your emotions to navigate your way along the path of destiny. You will need light. Specific light as it, um, as it, it concerns the area you have been called to serve. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Very popular scripture. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. I presume that someone is really getting blessed. Hosea 4 and verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed. They are my people, but they are still destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It says, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest unto me. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Very, very challenging scripture. Here's what it says. The labor of the foolish... Weary yet every one of them 
because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. Not because there is no glorious destiny. He does not know how to go to the city. So it's about knowledge. He has the feet that can take him there. But he does not have the know-how. Knowledge is very important in this kingdom. Knowledge is very important in this kingdom. How do you get knowledge? By the truth. It will cost you. The Bible says to buy the truth. You don't just get the truth. You buy the truth. That means the truth is costly. Listen, what do you use to buy the truth? Number one, you use humility and meekness to buy the truth. These are currencies. The truth is an expensive commodity. You can use humility as a currency to buy the truth. You can use meekness as a currency to buy the truth. You can use honor as a currency to buy the truth. You can use passion as a currency to buy the truth. You can use hunger as a currency to buy the truth. When it has to do with buying the truth, it may be free, but it is not cheap. It will cost you something. There are many arrogant people, unfortunately uh, and respectfully speaking, especially uh, our generation of young people, there is such arrogance in the midst of ignorance. It's amazing how our lives can be simplified just by submitting ourselves to superior knowledge. Can I tell you this? When you submit yourself to knowledge, it does not demean or downplay what you already are. In fact, it gives you an opportunity to rise higher. Can you imagine Jesus Christ who was the Word made flesh according to the book of John 1? The Word made flesh. Yet, Jesus was found in the temple at age 12. What would the world need to do in the temple again? The Bible says he was at the temple learning under the scribes and the Pharisees. This was the word incarnate, the very logos of God who became flesh. And yet he submitted himself to learning. We must submit ourselves to learn. We must submit ourselves to grow. There are dimensions of growth that the Bible seeks to be captured in our lives. It is important that we learn. It is important that we learn. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was encouraging the church in Colossae. And he encouraged them. He said, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Number one, you might be filled with all wisdom. Number two, number three, you might be filled with all spiritual understanding. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Here's what the Bible says. 32. Acts 20 and verse 32. It says, I commend you, brethren, to God and to the word of his grace. I commend you, brethren, to God and to the word of his grace, which is able. This is what the word of God is able to do. It's able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Very powerful. Light. Knowledge. When I started out in life and ministry, I realized that I had so much ignorance in my life and I made up my mind as a covenant with my own destiny that I would contend for light, high-level spiritual illumination. I have never stopped being a student of knowledge. It will be my default state for the rest of my life. I thank God for that which he has helped me to know and to help me to see. But it will have to be from glory to glory. Hallelujah. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Very powerful song. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. You always know those who know by their passion and their desire to know more. Paul, one who epitomized the spirit of revelation in the New Testament, he said that I may know him. In the height, it was Paul that wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. And yet he cried that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. We must stop 
uh, we must destroy this arrival mentality and this local champion mentality and begin to contend for high level spiritual illumination and let me tell you this in getting knowledge you have to the first kind of knowledge you need is the ability to look for what you do not know more than just getting information if there is a kind of knowledge you need to learn how to search for what you do not know the bible giving a parable said that the kingdom of god operates on this wise a woman who lost a coin in a room and the bible says the first thing she did was to light a lamp and when she lit that lamp she took a broom and started sweeping until she found that which was lost do you know how to light that lamp and do you know how to sweep until you find that which is missing the power of light number three the third demand for a glorious destiny is the power of a transformed mind I can spend this entire session just discussing this one the power of a transformed mind in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 here's what the Bible says for as he thinketh in his heart he says so is he for as he thinketh he didn't say so he will become he already is the Bible equates your life and your destiny to the health of your thoughts psychologists and ministers of the gospel this is where both science psychology and religion agree that every man will ultimately be an a physical expression of the health or otherwise of his thoughts your thoughts are very powerful you attract to your life physical scenarios physical things that will match up the level of your thinking now most believers and i say this respectfully most believers in church focus on their spiritual development which is profitable but they ignore their mind because for many they have not been taught the roles that their minds have to play as far as actualizing destiny is concerned it takes more than the health of your spirit to be able to fulfill destiny for as he thinketh in his mind or heart so is he the Bible says in Psalm 78 and verse 41, very popular scripture. I like to use this every time I teach about the mind. The Bible says, yea, Psalm 78, 41, yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. The first time I found this scripture, I found it shocking. How could a man limit the unlimited God? But the Bible says they limited the Holy One of Israel. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, it says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, it says, If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on the things that are honest. Think on the things that are true, just, pure, lovely, of good report. It leaves you with that assignment. Culture the information that gets into your mental space, he says. They have an implication on your destiny. This is very important. Very, very important. Your mindset is an authorized channel for both the Holy Ghost and demon spirits to access your life superior belief system what is a belief system a belief system is a paradigm is a perspective is a viewpoint a plane of judgment for many of us we have shipped in several belief systems from culture from our pasts from our failures from our levels of exposure from our you know um, associations and all of these thought lines that we have carried we have brought them to our minds and for some of us in spite of the fact that we love the lord sincerely we have allowed these tumbling blocks of limiting beliefs 
beliefs that make you believe that you cannot excel either because of gender or because of age belief systems that make you believe that you have to be corrupt and to manipulate your way wrongly to be successful belief systems that encourage laziness and entitlement mentality belief systems that make people feel that when you fail once it means you are a failure all of these are belief systems that you have to conquer when satan came to jesus to test him he said it is written in other words my mind has been framed by this the bible says let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 the word let means permit this mind to be in you jesus had a mindset that made him excel he didn't just excel because he was the son of god listen carefully there was a mindset and he says let this mind or let this belief system be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. May I request where you are that you just speak in one minute over your mind and decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, I contend for a transformed mind. A transformed mind is not, is not an impartation. You, you buy the truth and you change your belief system by bringing in new superior word compliant information into your mental space. Declare in one minute that in the name of Jesus, you may wish to lay your hands on your head and make that declaration that in the name of Jesus, I declare my disloyalty to any mindset, any paradigm, any belief system that is antichrist. It may be culturally right. If it is scripturally wrong, throw it away. It may, it may conform. It may, it may appease your current status quo. But if it will not take you to the place of destiny, you have to get it away. Let me show you a scripture. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Very powerful scripture. Now unto him. 3.20 Ephesians it says. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now look at me very carefully. Here's what the Bible says. That God can do what we ask for and God can do what we think. If I tell you sit down at my, my left or sit down at my right, what I'm trying to suggest is that whether you sit at the left or right, whichever, um, one does not seem to have an advantage over the other. If I say sit at my left or my right, it means you can derive equal advantage or similar advantage regardless where you sit. Now the Bible says God is able to do above all that we ask or think. You may have heard it say, you have heard me say it in my teachings that your asking and your thinking are both prayer warriors. There are two ways to pray. One is by verbalizing, the other is by thinking that your mind is also a prayer warrior. It is not just what you ask by verbalizing alone that is answered. He says God can do what you ask or think. So your asking can say, God, open a great door for me. God, bring destiny help us. While your thinking says, God, forget about that prayer. I'm comfortable with a small life. The Bible says it is within the power of God to answer both prayers. Could it be that your mind has been stopping many things that your lips has been asking for? You've been saying, God, open me up to a new world of prosperity, influence, the anointing, grace. And your mind is saying, God, I do not need it. I'm comfortable where I am. Once there is a conflict between your saying and your thinking, you will never have a result. The Bible says, let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. The power of superior beliefs. So I've taught you three keys so far. Demands. Number one. A quick recap is the power of vision number two the power of light high level spiritual illumination number three the power of a transformed mind sustaining superior belief systems and let me tell you this belief systems are not generated they are outsourced you have to outsource from a a um, from an an environment that may be strange to what you have known so far you must be comfortable to bring in new superior ideas you must be open-hearted enough to allow new superior ideas to come in for instance probably you've never been taught that god can use you just as you are looking at me you may think i'm frail i'm limited 
but now you must entertain a new word based idea that God is able to use me that he does not just call the qualified he can qualify those he calls number four I'll give you this as the last one and then we'll pray for this session pray and trust that the Lord would hide in our hearts all that we have learned so far a man's gift you can replace that word gift with a man's value the Bible assures you that the, a man's value can make room for him and that it bringeth him before great men. A man's gift, the Bible says, maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. This is a very powerful statement. A man's gift, any man can make room for him like an usher it can take you from a background of shame and reproach to a background to a, a a life of honor and beauty and color and glory the power of value what is value value is a measure listen carefully value is a measure of your usefulness to your world your usefulness to your 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 generation your usefulness your ability to solve problems your ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful to your sociological context this is very powerful value does not just mean your usefulness as a person we are all useful but the 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 value the usefulness the solution providing ability that you can bring to the table of greatness i'm sitting here on a beautiful chair and a table call this the table of greatness if you want to sit here life demands that there must be something you have to offer you're not just going to be granted access to sit upon the table of greatness bringing nothing so for someone this may be your value wisdom for someone this may be your value creativity for someone this may be your value in whatever area the most important thing is to make sure that you are bringing something to the table. For someone, he's a preacher. He's bringing the value of the anointing, the power of God. For someone, he's bringing the value of productivity. I'm holding a beautiful mug here, you know, that contains my drink. And this, as wonderful as it is, this is an invention of someone's creativity. This can preserve whether it is something cold or hot. It has the ability to keep it strangely for a very long time this is value now whoever did this is ushered into the table of greatness you can come and sit there is a device here in my hand this device is someone's brainchild there is a beautiful map of the world here to inspire me that i have all the time this is someone's value what do you have to bring to the table of greatness what can your world appreciate and celebrate you for this is very very important most people want to be acknowledged they want to be great but they do, they have not paid attention to discover and build their value this is what i learned so powerfully from my dearly revered mentor dr miles munro he taught on the power of value let me show you a scripture that has blessed me through the years mark chapter 1 let's start from verse 35 this was um a capture of jesus's evangelical exploits he moved from place to place blessing people and you know after a full day of of crusades and all of that the bible says and in the morning verse 35 rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed 36 Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And then verse 37, the Bible says, When they have found him, when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Let me repeat something that has become an anthem in my life. That there are things when you carry, only your tribes people will look for you. There are graces and gifts and value that when you carry, only young people will look for you. There are things that when you carry, only the poor will look for you. There are things when you carry, only the rich will look for you. But there are treasures of value that when you carry, the Bible says all men seek for you. Diplomats, men of God, students, young people, business people, politicians, captains of industry, 
academicians people in the media no matter what where they are there are graces that when you carry all men will seek for you when i found this scripture i made a covenant with my life and my destiny that i will contend for the kind of value that will cause kings to come even to the brightness of your rising may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ may that be your testimony that i will be so valuable i will capture within my life that which takes away shame forever that which takes away a sense of competition forever listen to me there is a realm of value that lifts you beyond the realm of competition there is a, a realm of value that lifts you beyond the realm of um, jealousy and all of these petty things. You see, some of the problems we have in our world today, especially among young people, is because they have not contended for the kind of value that brands your impact and puts you in a class by grace. Where there is no need for competition, there is no need for jealousy and all of these things because God would have so exalted you by your value. May that be your testimony. Listen, you never find traffic in the air. In America, I'm sure like it is in, in most parts of the world, there are regions, especially cosmopolitan cities, you can find traffic and people are, are held up in traffic for hours, hours. In Nigeria here we are ministering from parts of Lagos, Abuja and you know some of the cosmopolitan cities you can find traffic and you can be in a log jam for hours but you'll never find that in the air. I've never had an occasion where um, the pilot told us to have to stand in the air because there are other planes passing and we have to be patient. Once we lift we're there until we land. There might be a problem there might be uh, cues to lift but once you lift and you get to the air that's it so become a high flyer by becoming extremely valuable valuable to your world valuable to your church valuable even there in the united states of america whatever part of the world you're watching from the beautiful thing about value is that value was designed to be appreciated and rewarded anywhere you are in the world some regions may have a higher appreciation for your value but i guarantee you when you step into the realm of mastery and competence in value regardless where you are across the globe it will lift you and bring you to a point of notoriety and honor take away shame and reproach from your life take away sadness and regrets take away the pressure to want to be like this or that by becoming distinctively valuable in the name of jesus now wherever you are i want you to begin to pray begin to pray and declare over your life father in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be visionary i obtain grace by the power of the holy ghost i will be a man and a woman of vision i will be a man and a woman of vision in the name of jesus i take away distractions from my life distractions that come from negative relationships i commit myself to the discipline of vision are you praying open your mouth and pray let it be from the depth of your heart I make a resolution obtaining grace from God that from tonight, from today, morning, afternoon, whatever time it is there, I am praying for myself and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, you will be a man of vision, a woman of vision by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now you pray that I contend for light light i buy books some of you may need to leave after this broadcast and go to your library go and get books go on youtube download valuable messages that speak to the areas of need or concern and camp with the truth camp with the truth until it transforms you how long should i press for knowledge until you are delivered because knowledge has the power to deliver it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered are you praying in the name of jesus i contend for high level light why am i not enjoying good membership in my church why am i not enjoying favor it could be that there is something i do not know lord i take responsibility for my life and my destiny full responsibility i throw away blaming pastors blaming government blaming people i take full responsibility and i obtain grace in the name of jesus christ to begin to contend for light in the areas of darkness 
the areas of darkness you shine that light until darkness gives way john 1 5 says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not go ahead and pray i obtain grace lord i take responsibility over the areas of ignorance could be that you are doing well in your life spiritually but financially things are not working well it could be that you've gotten light in the area of finances but you don't understand the principles of relationships you don't have friends you drive away all your destiny helpers because there is something you do not know attack ignorance with a level of fierce determination i make up my mind that ignorance will be far from my life go ahead and pray now pray for superior beliefs lord i decree and declare again through the power of light and quality materials i buy the truth with humility i buy the truth with meekness i throw away pride what i do not know i stop arguing about i will go to find out the truth from those that sell he said go to them that sell and buy go to them that sell and buy there are custodians of wisdom there are custodians of truth there are custodians of knowledge with proven track records in ministry there are custodians in business there are custodians in whatever aspect of your life you have no excuse to remain in darkness our world today and the internet has given us access to find high level spiritual illumination across the areas of concern go ahead and pray lord i repent for carelessness in contending for light i obtain grace i obtain grace in the name of jesus christ now listen very carefully before i continue on the sessions i just sense in my heart that it is time for someone to come to jesus you might be saying apostle i've been so blessed and inspired just hearing you but my own challenge is that i've not even started the journey i have not come to jesus who the bible says is the way the truth and the life remember the bible says the labor of the fool were yet every one of them because he does not know the way the way is not just a path the way is a person and that person is jesus the son of the living god jesus came as god's gift to us from heaven and he came and paid the price for your sin defeated hell satan sin the grave resurrected triumphantly and now has given you an opportunity to be reconciled back to the father you may be following from your home following from your room sitting on your sofa just listening to this preacher from africa and the holy spirit is speaking to you now is the time to win that war now is the time to hand over everything to jesus i'm yours i'm yours i'm yours forever i'm yours i'm yours i'm yours my life is yours it's yours it's yours forever it's yours it's yours it's yours very powerful song whatever you ask of me i surrender that should be your prayer whatever you ask of me i surrender now i want to lead you to jesus christ hear me i'm holding on my hands this bible this contains the truth of god's word and revealed in this bible is the love of the father expressed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ john chapter 3 and verse 16 says for god so loved the world listen carefully for god so loved you call your name for god so loved you for god so loved joshua selman that he gave his only begotten son the bible says that whosoever whosoever preacher black white african asian 
american european the caribbeans wherever male female old young whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life i want to lead you now to make this prayer mean it from the depth of your heart you are praying this prayer with me i want you to place one hand on your chest as a sign of surrender and say this from the depth of your heart that's right i'm talking to you place your hand and say this after me say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i have heard today that you died for me you rose again for my justification you conquered sin you conquered death you conquered hell you conquered the grave all for me right now i make jesus lord of my life savior of my soul and king of my destiny i obtain forgiveness for sins and i decree and declare that from now until the rest of my days I am a recipient of the life of God. I am a child of God. I decree and declare that I am saved, born again, born anew, a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. Father, I pray for my precious viewers in the name that is above all names. They have declared the lordship of jesus over their lives i commend them by the power of the holy spirit to the ministry of the word to build to establish them even in righteousness i declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin the power of hell the power of the grave and of satan is broken over your life you are recipients of the life of god born anew by the grace of god i declare and i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ serve a God who gives us a glorious future, a God who cares for us, a God who provides for us, a God who enables and strengthens us. Every young leader, know that God is your strength, and He is God.
with your power You perform miracles There is nothing that's impossible And we're standing here only because you made You move mountains for me, Jesus You cause every obstacle to fall With your mighty power in Jesus' name, yeah You perform miracles for me, yeah There is nothing that is impossible And we're standing here Because our God is great Listen How great you are How great you are Oh, oh. how great you are How great you are
you give me a glorious future because your act band in luck, but is this one that says take everything take everything I don't want it I don't need it go take all of me cause I Just want you. Lenga baso tere pani kani arana mos for a glorious future. I just want you because without him we have nothing, not even a now. I just want you. Yeah. Say take everything. Say. to sing it everybody your voice come on sing it with me say take everything take everything I don't want it I don't need it God take everything I don't want it I don't need it God I just want God, we just want you. I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. I'm desperate. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I just want you. We just want you. We just want you. We just want you. We just want you. To my hearts, we are crying out. We just want you. Yeah. We just want you. Let's end it with the voices. Everybody say, take, take everything. I don't want it. I don't need it. God, take. Just want you. I just want you. For the last time, everybody say, I just want.